In this video, we'll look at the product rule. Um, so I'll start off by showing you what the product rule is. I'll follow up with a quick proof of the product rule, and then I'll show two examples. Uh, if you want to skip to a certain part in the video, like you don't need to see the proof perhaps, uh, I'll have links to the times in the description below. So let's dive right in. All right, so first off, product rule. Well, the product rule is what tells me how to evaluate the derivative with respect to x of f of x times g of x. And a lot of us, when we see this the first time, we want this to equal f prime of x times g prime of x. We want to just take the derivative of each part, but this is not true. What the derivative of this actually equals is g of x times the derivative of f plus f of x times the derivative of g. And uh, a quick example to really highlight the fact that this over here, what might seem like the intuitive rule that we want to have happen, isn't the case, but this is, I can consider this little example. So I want to evaluate the derivative with respect to x of x to the fifth times x cubed. Now, a lot of the problems we're going to see, or well, one more of the examples we're going to see, I wouldn't recommend actually doing product rule. I would recommend doing this um, using the algebra to combine these um, powers, so product of a power, and take the derivative with respect to x of x to the 5 plus 3, 8, which will be 8x to the 7th. Now we can see, if I follow this rule, I'll make x to the fifth f, x cubed g, and so I'll have g times f prime, so I'll have x cubed times 5x to the fourth, plus f times g prime, x to the fifth, times 3x squared, and you can see that I get 5x to the seventh, plus 3x to the seventh, which is 8x to the seventh, just like we wanted by what we already knew was true. However, I tried to use this rule taking the derivative of x to the fifth, I get 5x to the fourth. Taking the derivative of x cubed, I get 3x squared, and you can clearly see 5x to the 4th times 3x squared is 15x to the 6th. It doesn't have the right coefficient, nor does it have the correct um, exponent. So, clearly, that is not the right method. Next up, the proof. Uh, and again, if you don't need to see the proof, feel free to skip. Um, in the description, there will be time codes for the examples. But it is worth knowing why something is true. So, in this proof, I will start with this left hand side and try to turn it into this right hand side. Now, you'll notice I always do this g times f prime plus f times g prime. Because addition is associative, I could put this term first and that term second. I don't because when we get to quotient rule with a minus sign in the quotient rule and some more stuff going on, it is important that I start with the g. So I'll always start with g f prime for product rule because it is in there for quotient rule. So, proof of this. The derivative with respect to x of f of x times g of x will equal the limit as h approaches 0 of the difference quotient. So that's going to be f of x plus h times g of x plus h minus f of x times g of x all over h. And here's the trick to this one. So previous video we saw the sum and difference rule where I could just sort of reorder what I had. 
Well, there's no reordering here because I have a subtraction sign and multiplication. So what I need to do is this. So that will equal the limit as h approaches 0. I'm going to have f of x plus h, g of x plus h. I'm going to leave some space to fill in something, and then I'll have minus f of x, g of x, all over h. And I'm just going to fill in the sort of special magical term that will get me what I want. And what I want is I want to be able to get a g out here and be left with the derivative of f. I want to be able to factor out an f here and be left with the derivative of g, and I can do that by doing minus f of x g of x plus h plus f of x g of x plus h. Okay, now, two things to consider. First, why can't I do this? Well, you can see if I subtract and add the same thing to an expression, it's like adding on zero. It doesn't change the values, the additive identity. So I can do this because um, in here, I'm not really changing the value. I'm adding on zero. The next question, why do we do this? Well, now I can group this up and group that up. And I'll rewrite this. So I'll split the fraction as well, the limit as h approaches 0. In here, both of the terms in the numerator have a g of x plus h, so I'll factor that out. So I have g of x plus h times f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Now I have plus the limit as h approaches 0. And both of these terms have an f of x And when I factor that out of the numerator, I'll be left with a g of x plus h minus g of x all over h. And now it just sort of falls into place. So this will equal. Um, the limit of a product is the product of the limit, so I can split this up. As h approaches 0, g of x plus h just approaches g of x. This right here is the difference quotient on f. The limit as h approaches 0 will be the derivative with respect to x of f of x. Plus, there is no h in here at all, so that will just be f of x. And this right here is the difference quotient for g of x. And the limit as h approaches 0 of that is the derivative of g of x, which, lo and behold, is the other side. So I was able to work my way from here to here um, just using basically the definition of the derivative and some limit rules, so as was to be shown. Okay, a couple of examples. Now, so example one. Now, if I had this problem by itself without anything else, I wouldn't do product rule for it at all, but um, since I want to see the practice, We'll start off by showing how to use product rule. I'll make this f, make this g, and I know that this derivative will be g f prime plus f g prime. And so I just follow through with that. g is 2x squared minus 5x. f prime is 4 plus f is 4x plus 5 g prime is 4x minus 5, and I distribute through the 4, and I'll get 8x squared minus 20x. I multiply this through, and 4x plus 5 times 4x minus 5 is the difference of squares. That will just be plus 4x quantity squared, which is 16x squared, minus 5 squared, which is 25. And that's because 4x times negative 5, which is negative 20x plus 5 times 4x, which is positive 20x, cancel. And now I can just combine like terms, and I'll get 24x squared minus 20x minus 25. 
So that will be the solution. That will be the answer. But there's a different way, a better way, I think, to do this, just avoiding product rule. I show it this way because it's a product rule video, but if I had a choice, I would just do it this way. I would do the algebra first inside here before I do the calculus derivative. So multiplying this through, 4x times 2x squared is 8x cubed. 4x times negative 5x is minus 20x squared. 5 times 2x squared is plus 10x squared. And 5 times negative 5x is minus 25x. And I would reduce this a little bit, combining like terms. So I would get 8x cubed minus 10x squared minus 25x. And now I can just use regular polynomial derivatives to get 24x squared minus 20x minus 25. So same answer. This one's a little bit easier, I think. All right, on to another example where we can't just use the uh, algebra to expand it out before we take the derivative. Now, for, my, for me putting this in order, I haven't shown um, my class yet. I haven't put a video up for the derivative of trig functions, but we'll get to that soon enough. Um, so here's the idea. In order to find the equation of the normal line, two things I need. I need the point, which I can find by just trying to figure out what f of pi over 2 is which would be pi over 2 squared times the sine of pi over 2. Pi over 2 squared is pi squared over 4. The sine of pi over 2 is going to give me 1. And so my point, the x-coordinate is pi over 2. The y-coordinate is just going to be pi squared over 4. Next, I need the derivative, because I need to find the slope. So the derivative, f prime, is going to be, um, I could do g times f prime. Now again, I have an f here and f there. So let's just say instead of g's and f's, I'll make this u's and v's. So I want to do v times the derivative of u plus u times the derivative of v. So in here, that will be the sine of x times the derivative of u, so that's going to be times 2x, plus u, which is x squared, times the derivative of v, the derivative of sine is cosine, and I, you know, I could rewrite this, I will, you can just go on and put in the pi over 2 at this point, but I'll write it a little bit neater, so 2x sine of x plus x squared cosine of x, and now I want to find f prime of pi over 2 to find the tangent slope. So I'll have 2 times pi over 2 times the sine of pi over 2 plus pi over 2 squared times the cosine of pi over 2. And in here, 2 times pi over 2 is pi, sine of pi over 2 is 1, pi over 2 quantity squared is pi squared over 4, and the cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so my tangent slope will be pi, and that means my normal equation will be y equals the opposite reciprocal, negative 1 over pi, x minus the x-coordinate, plus the y-coordinate. Alright, I hope this helped out. Feel free to comment below if you have any questions.